This morning, we are getting answers to your burning questions about kids and vaccines. Uh, Dr. Suzanne Tansky from the Children's Hospital at Dartmouth-Hitchcock got up early and joins us live this morning with some helpful advice. Uh, Dr. Audra wrote on Facebook asking if children need two shots for full immunity, just like adults, or is it one shot for kids? It's two shots for kids, just like so many of the childhood vaccines where you get a series of things to make sure that you get all of the immune response you need. This is a two dose vaccine, just like it is for adults. So 21 days apart, just like for adults. And doctor, our viewer, viewers also wanted to know what side effects can we expect to see in kids after they get the vaccine? With every shot we get, there's always a risk for a sore arm. I know my 10 year old daughter always tells me how her arm is sore after she gets her shots. So that's the most common if side effect is that your arm's going to be sore, it might be a little bit red, might be a little swollen. And in those first couple of days after vaccine, after the COVID vaccine, just like with adults, we've seen a little bit of fever, chills, headache, fatigue muscle aches and pains. The cool thing is that with this child dose and the, with our young kids, they've shown overall much fewer side effects than our adult counterparts. So they've really done very well with this in the Pfizer trial. Yeah, so we're talking about little kids here. What is the best way to explain to a child what to expect from a shot in a way that won't be scary or overwhelming? Great question. Well, so many kids have so much experience with vaccines because our childhood vaccines they get when they're little ones, when they're four, when they're 11, and our, many of our kids get their flu vaccine every year. We really should frame this in the same way as any flu vaccine or, or any of our other shots. It's just a pinch for a couple of seconds. And often the buildup and the worry about it is much worse than the actual vaccine itself. So it's a little pinch and then away you go. All right, and Dr. Granisaters also want to know this morning, should children be allowed to have input in whether or not they want this vaccination or are they too young to weigh in on with all this information? This is really up to your family. There's some families that have lots of conversations about and they get a lot of input from their kids. You know your own child best. And so it really depends on kind of how your family works with those things. There's a lot of complexity and nuance in any vaccine. And uh, I think a lot of our kids are extremely excited about getting their vaccine because they really want to get back to normal. They want to be able to see their friends and avoid quarantine, avoid the risk of trying to spread, of possibly spreading it to their friends or family. So there's a lot of enthusiasm about this. And speaking of getting back to normal, if a child is fully vaccinated, does that mean they can start taking off their mask in certain situations? That's absolutely our dream and our goal. We really want to be mask free as quickly as possible. For the moment, the CDC is still recommending that we keep our masks because there is still so much circulating virus. And we know that those masks offer a lot of protection from us giving it to anybody else and for, from protecting ourselves to, from getting it from anybody else. So in indoor situations, the recommendation for right now is still that we wear our mask. And then in those situations where you're in contact with lots of people, please hold on, keep your mask for a little while longer this is going to get better, though, as we increase the number of individuals who are protected against this virus, the closer we get to normal. And doctor, we're hearing from a lot of people. If children are less likely to experience severe illness from COVID-19, why do they need the COVID-19 vaccine? This is a really important question, and it's not just about death. And I think that's what's really important. And it's hard to compare this to adults because, indeed, adults get so much more seriously ill. They have a much higher risk of hospitalization and death in the adults. And so, yes, kids fare much better. But remember, every time a kid gets this illness, they're quarantined from school for 10 days. That's probably seven days of missed instruction. That's a lot of time away from their friends. And there is the risk of transmitting to other people. For kids who do get COVID disease, there is a risk of, of of some other issues down the way. We don't want our kids to get sick at all. And indeed, we've had about 94 kids in this age group die in the United States from COVID disease. And kids aren't supposed to die. There's been 800 kids under the age of 18 who've died from COVID. And these are all now vaccine preventable deaths. We do so many things to protect our kids. We use seat belts and car seats and helmets and sunscreen. And all of those things are to protect our kids and give them long, happy, healthy lives. And a vaccine is that same kind of insurance and protection to make sure that they, our kids can be as healthy as possible. And of course, parents are worried about their kids and they worry about the effects of the vaccine. Is there any research on the short or long-term effects of the Pfizer shot itself? 
Sure. So they're, they're actually following this very, very closely. There's a long list of things that they're they're looking for. Um, I will be I'm very happy to say that in the children's vaccine trials, they didn't see a single case of anaphylaxis, which is that serious, quick allergic reaction that happens within the first 15 minutes or so of actually getting the vaccine. So there were no cases of that, nor were there any cases of myocarditis. There's been a lot of discussion about that. That is an inflammation of the heart muscle that has been seen in, to be vaccine related in older adolescents boys in particular. Now, it's important to know, too, that the there's COVID re disease related myocarditis, and that is a much more serious illness, even in young people. So the cases that we've seen of vaccine related myocarditis have tended to be quite mild and gone away within a week or so. So so that's very encouraging. And in contrast, the disease related myocarditis is a much more serious thing. So again, here, the vaccine is preventing the risk of a more serious myocarditis. So um, again, they saw no cases of this in the trial. But again, this is a very rare event on the order of just a few per million doses given and in that specific age group. So with this smaller group of kids, we didn't see signal, but that doesn't say that there's zero risk. And for sure, that's something we're going to be following over time. And Dr. Tansky, if a child is very small for their age, is it still OK to give them the vaccine? Absolutely. So the, the, the way these vaccines work doesn't have to do with your size. It really has to do with your immune system. And regardless of what size you are, the dose is going to be the same. You could be a really big five-year-old or a tiny little five-year-old that was a premature kid, and your dose is going to be the same. And the immune effect is expected to be the same, too, because it's related to your immune system. All Great right. question. Very important information. Thank you, Dr. Suzanne Tansky from the Children's Hospital at Dartmouth-Hitchcock. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. And just to let everyone know, we're updating frequently asked questions on chadkids.org. So as more information comes and as more parents ask us questions, we'll post there so you have some up-to-the-minute information. Thanks right, so much. Thank you.